in all kinds of weather. The greatest motoring nation in the world, rolling on wheels. But let's be accurate, rolling on tires, because no car is any better, any safer, or more dependable than its tires. To the casual eye, they're not spectacular, just rubber donuts full of air. And because of their very reliability, we don't think much about them. Yet to make them that way requires scientific research and precision manufacture just as impressive as that which produced the motor cars they carry. Here is a success story written on the highways and byways of all America. A trail of proved reliability and satisfaction that began in the cool calm of the laboratory where advanced engineering is constantly directed toward improving on the past and prying into the future. For real progress is rarely a pole vaulting achievement, but rather the coordinated results of patient probing on a hundred fronts of experiment. Here in progress are scores of projects in pure science, employing such strange and wonderful tools as the electron microscope and the spectroscope and various other advanced technological devices that achieve miracles in revealing atomic structures, their workings, their affinities and antipathies, portrayed in weird designs such as this X-ray pattern of rubber. Here in the making are improvements in rubber compounding which will be reflected in improved tire performance perhaps 10 years ahead or tomorrow. But this is certain. No proved betterment will be held back to make next year's advertising headline, and none will be prematurely released to meet a new model deadline. What is the cord fabric of the future? Well, no one can say exactly, but it's in progress here someplace. For here in development are countless projects in cotton, rayon, nylon, yes, even experiments with cord made of spun glass and steel. And believe it or not, feathers. Fantastic? Well, perhaps. But if a hundred avenues of research produce one genuine improvement, that's an accomplishment well worthwhile. Similarly, in Trent design, it would be simple to change merely to be different, but real betterments come up the hard way. So a dozen, a score of experimental designs may be worked up before one proves itself worthy of the road. How well does a certain experimental design resist side thrust, as in cornering or battling crosswind? These questions and many more are explored and compared in the laboratory with scientific exactness. But for the acid test, there's nothing to compare with driving over a smooth concrete floor liberally coated with soapstone and water. A blanket of soap suds, more slippery than the bottom of any bathtub. Just keep your eye on the car and see a miracle. To fully appreciate the non-skid qualities of these advanced tires, just watch them in a comparative test with tires without that gripping tread action, out on the open road under actual rainy weather driving conditions. that speaks louder than the cleverest headline ever written. But that non-skid protection was no overnight achievement. Calm, scientific research can also be brutal, punishing. Here in the laboratory torture chamber, appropriately located underground, new experimental designs and tires from current production are literally run to death. Overloaded, underinflated, they are put through exaggerated abuse. Maybe it seems like a long jump from the highway to the torture chamber, but look at it this way. Here are being reproduced the effects of road hazards from all over America, exaggerated to the nth degree, yet subject to such accurate clinical control that the results shown in comparative studies of various experimental designs and compounds are scientifically certain. All 
all tires under test are treated exactly alike and far more brutally than any tire in ordinary owner service. It looks like wanton destruction. Actually, it is purposeful punishment to bring out answers. Answers which help to increase the lifespan and stamina of tires today and tomorrow. With these ingenious facilities for fact-finding, it is even possible to duplicate the action of a 40-ton super bomber landing at 200 miles per hour. Of course, it's a far cry from a super bomber to the average family car. But the know-how gained in these critical studies of rubber and fabric will pay dividends to all motordom in finer, safer road performance at all speeds. Thus, the never-ending search for better ways goes on, with all America as a test laboratory. All kinds of roads in every climate, at every driving speed, duplicating the conditions and the driving characteristics of Mr. and Mrs. Motorist wherever they may live. Allied in this research are the proving grounds of motor makers, for well they know that no car can be better than its tires. And behind today's standard of tire performance lies the close collaboration with automotive engineers since the very infancy of the motor industry. These are the most valuable tires in the world. They're tires from the torture chamber, from the test cars, and from the proving grounds. They're the martyrs of progress, revealing new avenues to improvement in design and in manufacture. In this newest and most modern of tire plants, advanced facilities give new precision, new meaning to the craftsmanship of tire building. For tire engineering does not end with development. It continues through every phase of production in the form of rigorous quality control. Here, a master batch is in the making, the various elements being measured for compounding. It's a big volume operation, yet the various ingredients are automatically weighed with an exactness reminiscent of laboratory practice. Down in the mixers, rubber stocks and chemicals are blended in accordance with strict standards of procedure. Yet before any batch is released for further processing, it must be tested and passed by the quality control station, which functions as an independent element within the production organization. And this critical system of checks and balances is apparent throughout the entire manufacturing system. Now the muscle and sinew of the tire begins to take form. Stout, twisted rayon cords flowing through an intricately complex pattern, every cord rigidly controlled as to tension. Of course, rayon cord is better. It's stronger, more flexible, and less affected by heat. But rayon is also tricky to handle, and to take full advantage of all its superior qualities required the development of a new, monstrous, and ingenious machine. From the creel, the cord starts a one-way continuous journey in the form of a flat ribbon, free from any cross threads. Into the latex dip, where every strand of every cord is thoroughly impregnated with live rubber compound, providing a natural adhesive base for the heavier rubber coating to come. Then, into the giant drying oven. Within that tightly enclosed chamber, temperature and humidity are rigidly and automatically controlled. 
one of the most vital secrets in processing, which retains all the inherent strength of the cord. Emerging, the cord is drawn in festoons and finally through a tension-adjusting control and a precise spacing bar, which exactly positions the individual cords. Then into the four-roll calendar, an innovation in itself which simultaneously coats both sides of the solution cord with compounded rubber stock. Volumes might be written about the advantages of progressive fabrication symbolized in this straight-line process, which requires less than four minutes, but it all adds up to the single goal of controlled uniformity. Another machine with almost human intelligence is the so-called dual tuber. Here, the base stock and the sidewall stock is especially compounded to withstand flexing. Then the machine is smart enough to lay a tough, long-wearing tread stock exactly centered between the sidewalls. These emerge as a single strip, precisely formed and measured. Here, as everywhere, uniformity is paramount. From the tuber, the stock goes through a cooling bath, which gradually reduces the temperature over a 200-foot cooling process. There is further evidence of quality-mindedness, even in such seeming trifles as the method of cutting the tread to proper length. Just the angle of the skyver is important. Why? Well, look. Here's a tread sliced in the ordinary way. See how much, or rather, how little splicing area there is? But look at the contact area of this splice, giving assurance of better balance, more uniform construction. As the final check, every section of tread stock is carefully weighed. Wire for beads is first given a bonding coat of rubber, formed into coils the exact size required, then wrapped with fabric of special adhesive properties. They call this the flipper strip. Actually, it ties the beads securely into the tire carcass. In the critical job of ply cutting, Modern electronic science comes to the aid of expert fingers. An electric eye speeds up production and also doubles the accuracy of the work. Tires for the biggest and heaviest of passenger cars are built on these semi-automatic machines. It is in the production of these tires with relatively small rim size and large air volume that perfect balance and uniformity are of paramount importance. the machine automatically controls all the factors which contribute to that critical exactness. is precisely positioned and laid on snugly, yet free from tension. Similarly, in all functions in which human judgment might vary from one operation to another, the machine does the job consistently throughout the tire and the hundreds to follow. 
Crossroads of production of the popular sized tires is the merry-go-round. At first it looks like a frenzy of confusion. But look closer. Observe how advanced technology has sharpened and simplified tire building through the delivery and precise positioning of materials. Of course, the tire still bears only a slight resemblance to its finished form. Perhaps you wonder how it will ever fit into the mold. Well, watch. As the lid closes, the bagomatic inflates, forcing the tire into its conventional shape and fitting it exactly to the vulcanizing chamber. Now the tire will receive its tread imprint and be vulcanized under conditions of temperature, time, and pressure, which must be exact to ensure proper road performance. Yet so completely have advanced methods replaced old-fashioned practice that the curing machines are practically independent. Sensitive instruments far surpassing any degree of human expertness control all the factors of curing. While we're waiting for the tire to cure, let's look behind the scenes at one of the most significant synthetic rubber developments of all time. This is an all-American synthetic achievement. Butyl rubber, it is a rubber of many uses, most important of which right now is inner tubes. Tubes that hold air 10 times better than natural rubber are far longer lived and infinitely safer on the road. And together with this new wonder rubber, there's an exclusive new process for producing tubes, a process that gives you butyl tubes at their best. From the extruding machine, the endless butyl tubing is drawn over a series of cones. Gradually, so gradually that you can scarcely see it happen, the tubing is given a curved shape. In working process, perhaps that doesn't mean much to you. But in the finished tube, now you see it. This tube, as it is inflated in the tire, stretches uniformly and maintains full strength and gauge. To fully appreciate what that means, compare this ultra-modern tube with an inflated tube of ordinary production methods, unevenly stretched on the outside and with the thinnest side next to the road. Which do you want in your tires? No argument, of course. This tube costs more to build, but it's worth it, many thousands of miles over. Now back to the curing room, and with the regularity of Big Ben, the lids of the curing machines yawn open. And there's our tire, looking like a tire ought to look, engraved with a tread distinguished all over America. 
All ready for the road? Oh, no, not yet. Again, it must face the critical inspectors, one for tread, one for sidewalls, and one for inner carcass. You'd never guess it, but in those few practiced motions, the inspector's talented fingers and trained eyes cover more than 40 points. Finally, the tire is balanced and marked for the valve stem positioning. And then, here it is, ready for the big parade. The tires of proved improvement, built better in the plant to give better performance on the road. Engineered for satisfaction always and in all ways.